Hi, in this short video, I'll show you how easy it is to, to create a MySQL database in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and how you can connect it to it when it is in a private uh, subnet. Very, very easy. So first step that we want to do at this point, it is to go to hamburger menu, select databases, and we have the MySQL DB systems. We'll click on this menu. In here, I have some other test databases. I'll create a new database. I will name it TestDB. Now I can write something in the description, but this is optional for this one. But let's write something. In here, we're going to have the test administrator uh, credentials that we need to it. We have the ability to create it in high availability the database, or you can even use the uh, heat wave part if you want something really performant. But because it's a test and just to, to show you how easy it is to create and how to connect it, you make it standalone. Yeah, we're gonna use the username sys in here. We're gonna put the password. Let's put the password in here. Okay, so now we have the password in there. Next step it is to specify on which network will be installed. So I'll specify an existing VCN. I will select the private subnet. Okay, and from here we go and select. Uh, the placement yeah we can put it in different fold domains different availability domains next step it is to select what is the hardware from hardware perspective we have multiple uh, IMD shapes from where we can select so also we have standard yeah um, Intel shapes in here from where to select yeah you have optimized you have standard uh, two and three and so on so a lot of shapes that can be used by you but usually we recommend to go with uh, uh, E4, yeah, because E4 it is uh, a newer one. If you need more uh, CPUs, you can go and change it from here. Yeah, so we can increase the number of CPUs and 16 GB arrive. You select database storage size that you want to use. We also recommend to have backups, so this will make your life much easier. You select a random, uh, yeah, backup period. Yeah, the default one is seven days, but you can go and increase it to 30 days at least for my recommendation. You can have also select when you want to the, the backup to be done in the back end. If you're going to select advanced options in here, you have the ability yeah, to uh, protect the database from deletion. So yeah, if it is selected, it needs to be disabled before you do the deletion. Now from the configuration, yeah, you can go and select a different version of MySQL if you want to put it in here. Uh, okay, so you can also create your own uh, shapes. Yeah, you have create a custom one if you want it and do it. From cache recovery, yeah, you already have the ability, it is enabled by default. What is of interest for me at this point, it is this networking part. So if I want to give it a name like test DB, yeah, so for the host name, it will appear in here. If you want to change the default port, you have the option to do it. And that's it. Press create and the database will be created in the backend. Because I already have a test DB yeah, created, I'm going to receive an error. So at this point, yeah, I will not proceed with the creation, but I'll show you how it is to how easy it is to connect to the database using the Bastion Horse service. Okay, so I will cancel this one. I will go to the Bastion service, Identity and Security. I'm gonna select the Bastion. In here, I have a Bastion service that was created before. So let me select one of that ones. I'll click Create a new session. If you remember my previous uh, Bastion host uh, video, I showed you how to create a manage SSH session. In this case, I need to create an SSH port forwarding session. Okay, what I'm going to need, it is the IP of the instance where I want to connect because this is not an instance where I want to connect. This is uh, a service. So for that, I will duplicate the tab. I will go to the database again, DB systems. I'll go to this database that I'm having in here. I'll copy the IP from here. I'll go back to Bastion. I'll put it in my case, the port that I want to use, it is a 3306 port. I want to put the same SSH key that I have in it in here and I want to use it again. I can also increase the, the time to leave and all of that. Yes, I'll click create session. Yeah, but time to leave it's always maximum is three hours by default, so I can decrease it. Okay, so let's wait a few seconds for this uh, port forwarding session is created. This is much faster than an SSH. 
in here, if I'm going to click again, view SSH commands, yeah, I'll have the ability to see this view SSH command. Now, as you can see in here, the command is different from the last time. So I'll copy it from here. I want to remove that part again. And what is important in here is to put a local port. Let me open this. It is the previous session that I have created. Let me delete it. I will use the new one. I'll go at the beginning. I will delete the minus i. Yeah, that is pointing to my private key. And instead of the local port, yeah, that is put it here. I can go and use the same 3306 because it is not in use on my computer or it should not be in use. Okay, and now I need to go to a terminal. Okay, let me clear this. I will paste it. Okay, and I press enter. So at this point, as you can see, uh, yeah, the tunnel was created in the back end. So how I can do the test in here? Let's say I can try a telnet. Okay, so as you can see, yeah, port 3306 is pointing me to MySQL database. Yeah, I'll even show me the, the, the version of it, not the database itself, but I know that is a database in there. So next step is to use a client yeah, to connect to your MySQL database. If you're going to have MySQL Workbench, you can go and use that one. If not, you can use, let's say, dbvor. This is one of the ones that I'm using uh, because I have the ability to use multiple uh, yeah, databases as connect connection targets. So in here, it's pretty simple what I have to do. I'll click connect. From here, I can select to what I want to connect. I'll select MySQL in this case. In here, database is localhost. Yeah, I know that I have a sys user. I will put the password in there. Okay, and I can click test connection. Okay, so as you can see, it connected directly to that uh, database and the connection is working one important thing yeah uh, it might need the uh, ssl yeah so if it gives you an error or something like that you can use ssl enable ssl from here and you can uh, specify deselect the verify server certificate so not receive additional errors okay so now i have the mysql database up and running yeah i'm connected to it and from there i can see the database so congratulations, you can go and create new databases if needed and run your environment into it. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.